Next, Kip Sabian with Penelope Ford against Cody Rhodes with Arn Anderson. This went through a break. Kip Sabian looks like a high school kid in a drama class production of West Side Story with Penelope <laughs> Ford, <clears throat> who we know personally she's got to be a crackpot because she's fucking around with Joey at Jelly Nutella. And secondly, we've established that she's a shits in the ring because we saw that last week, did we not? Did we? Did she, do something, we? In, did she do something in the ring that wasn't good last week? I don't remember that. Was was she not the one that couldn't fucking lock up? Did she not work less, or was it somebody else I'm thinking of? It may have been someone else, because I think she was in the intergender match that wasn't on the show. Okay, well then I'm sorry. Then I'll, I'll wait to see what she can do in the ring. But anyway, um, the first half of this match, the first segment, was a good top guy versus mid-card guy match, and Cody kept it a little interesting and gave him a little bit. And right when they went to the break, should have been when they were going to the finish. And Cody should have hit the crossroads. Boom, one, two, three. But instead, they go through a break. Then they come back. And Arn and the referee get into it. And Arn is kicked out of ringside for getting in the ring and, and chest bumping the referee. Why was this happening? He made Arn look stupid. Nobody wants to see Arn get kicked out of ringside. Why is Arn arguing with the referee when Cody is in a match with Kip Sabian. What's Arn supposed to do when Cody's in a match with the fucking MJF, his mortal enemy? Shoot the referee in the head? <clears throat> then, when Arn gets kicked out, uh, Penelope and Kip... I can't even believe I'm saying those names on a wrestling <laughs> program. <laughs> fucking hell. Penelope and Kip do go to do a kiss spot, and there comes Jelly up from behind the fucking railing, and they kiss him each on each side of his cheek. He jumped in in the middle of them and made a funny face. Cody Rhodes, your top baby face, is in the goddamn ring watching all this shit with underneath talent doing their own bullshit when he's supposed to be winning this fucking match. It's fucking stupid. <clears throat> then they go in the ring and K Sabian gets more heat on Cody. That's why I wrote down, what the fuck? As a matter of fact, I wrote down, do a good eight minutes and Cody hit your fucking finish for fuck's sake. And then finally, Cody gets mad and hits the crossroads three times on Kip Sabian. And that looked great. I got to say, Kip Sabian took that crossroads yeah. better than anyone else. It looked fantastic. And you know what? It was perfect if they were going to do videos from the hospital for the next month showing Kip Sabian in traction from taking co three of Cody's crossroadses. But he's going to be back on TV, I'm sure, on a YouTube show next week. One crossroads and put your foot on his fucking chest, young man. Because if you don't get over, nobody else in this fucking company besides Jericho is going to because they don't know how. So it's up to Co Cody, MJF, and Jericho to save this goddamn thing. So hit him with a crossroads, put your foot on his chest and pin him. If you're going to give him three, make sure that we see the footage of the fucking neurosurgery that follows Cody on Kip fucking Sabian. The, no, <clears throat> I've been telling guys this in locker rooms for the past year, since I realized what they were doing, everybody is sitting down with guys regardless of how they're presented by the promotion or how they're perceived by the fans or what they look like or what their talent level is, they're sitting down with everybody saying, let's have the best match we can. What do you do? I'll do all of your stuff. And then here's what I do. You do all of my stuff. No. Unless it's two main event guys in a big pay-per-view match for the championship to blow off the whatever the fuck. If it's a top main event guy and a middle card guy, have a nice match, give him some offense, kick shit out of him, and beat him with your finish. Fuck's sake. This is not goddamn rocket science. Then, remember how... Well, what did you think? I'm sorry, I skipped ahead of you. Well, that's quite all right sometimes. Uh, I personally like Kip and Penelope together as a unit. I think there's something that could be done with them. Hopefully yes. after they get through with the Jelly Nutella feud. And I didn't like, again, I don't like backstage vignettes that look fake. You mean to tell me Jelly Nutella sneaks down the ringside, no one reacts to him because he's not a star. Right. And he pops up perfectly timed. 
Yeah. Right as the camera's there. See, again, it's just... Because he knew they were going to do that. It's just one of those silly things I don't like. I did get a kick out of him giving him the middle finger as he backed off into the crowd. That cracked me up. But, again, it went too long. But I'm going to hone in on the Arn Anderson thing. They blew it with the introduction of Arn as Cody's coach. They yeah. did it in a press release. And then all of a sudden, he's with them on TV. We're supposed to, we're supposed to not only watch their YouTube shows, but read their press releases now. He has done nothing. He has added no value to any Can of this. Can you imagine the promo that they could have done if Cody called Arn out and asked him in front of all the people for the first time to be his coach and let Arn consider it and let Cody sell him on it and let Arn look at the people for their thoughts and then the handshake and the seal of the deal? That's television that they ain't fucking showing me when they're showing me goddamn Big Swole. Not just one of the great promos of all time, but one of the great promos in front of a crowd of all time. He did it during the Nitro era, and he was fantastic. And I do not believe... My he, spot. He has done maybe one But promo. there was an homage on one of our shows recently, as recently as an hour and a half or so That's ago. That's right. But in terms of the promos he's done on AEW TV since becoming the coach for the Rhodes Brothers, there was that one where he basically said, we, have not, we don't have anything to say. We'll say something next time. Yeah. One of the great talkers of all time. He's out there right now. They have not utilized his talking at all. This thing with him getting kicked out because of the boot. The boot offended him so much he had to go in there and belly bump the referee. <laughs> and then get kicked. It's just so stupid. It's like for every step forward, there's two steps back. In my eyes, I know to their fan base, everything's perfect. Everything's grand. You can't do anything wrong. But it just doesn't make sense sometimes. It's like you have an idea... And you go from A to Z, but you don't fill in any of the points in between. I don't understand what they're doing. It's a waste of Arn Anderson. If you're going to use Arn Anderson in a role like this, use Arn Anderson. Don't just have him out there in a sweater vest, walking you down to the ring, and then leaving, and he doesn't say anything. I had Arn Anderson for one television taping in Smoky Mountain Wrestling, and we created one of the five most well-remembered segments of the Two year, two hundred run, a two hundred episode run of the series, and they've got him every week. And Big Swole and Nyla Rose are going through a commercial break. That's yeah. the thing; they have a lot of people there who could actually do some talking without being scripted, and we don't hear from them enough. And instead, we get matches that go too long. That you, you know, forgive me if I'm wrong. I mean, like some of the Young Bucks matches go too long, but their audience is into it. No one's into Big Swole versus Nyla Rose, and I'm using them as an example for other matches that have gone that long, too. Utilize Arn Anderson. Where the fuck is Tully Blanchard? <laughs> well, he got kidnapped and tied to a chair, so he's pretty much impotent. Have we seen him second since week then? on television? I don't, maybe, that, that may have been his, he may still be in fucking, who did it? Was it Jelly? It was Jelly, and by the way, what happened to that program? What happened to Jelly Nutella? And Sean Spears, I'm not saying I was a big fan of that program, but if that program built up the jelly kidnapping Telly Blanchard and having him duct taped or whatever he was tied to a chair on the stage <laughs> and then nothing. And then it just went away. The dork order beat up the young bucks an angle that everyone shit on. Everyone was offended by. It was a huge beat down. They beat up the entire elite and nothing since then with the elite and the dork order. It's like no one is there dealing with quality control. Quality control is more than just how many flips you could do in a match. It's does this shit make sense? Is this laid out correctly? Does the format make any fucking sense? But again, what do I know? I'm just a you know, lifelong wrestling fan. I don't. Well, you know what? I'm thinking that maybe Tully saw that and said, you know what? Here's my chance to get to fuck off this sinking ship. And when they called him to come back to work, he said, no, I'm still tied to the chair in Jelly's basement. I can't get out. 